it's time to plan for a whole nother year of fun projects. And I have a big haul to start 2024 with. I want to share with you things that I bought on sale right after Christmas when everyone was doing all the sales. I picked up a few things and also some plans that I have for videos coming up, including next week. Um, I wanted to have a sewing video today for you instead of a haul. I actually was going to flip the videos, but I have had company since before Christmas and I'm doing, I have two days where no companies in the house. I'm going to film this. I'm going to completely refresh my house and more companies coming in. So no sewing is getting done right now, but I can share all of this fun stuff that I have with you. And I've also finally got another mic coming. So hopefully the echoey room is going to get better soon. So let's start with, I think I'll start with fabric. I did a quick little Hobby Lobby run. Now Hobby Lobby does um, about every month to six weeks, they do a 40% off all their fabrics, which was not the case this time. I, however, walked in and they had their fall fabrics on sale and something I was interested in was 50% off. And I'll show you two things here that I got from Hobby Lobby. It's this, it is sort of like a super soft pleather. Um, it'd make a great raincoat, sort of vinyl-y feeling, but it was for fashion fabric. Um, and I got it in this lovely wine cordovan oxblood color. Isn't that lovely? I got, um, I bought all that they had left, two and three quarters of a yard. It's 60 inch wide. I got this, originally it was $11 a yard. I got it for $5.50 a yard. So good deal on that. And I think I'm going to make sort of a classy looking raincoat, sort of leather style with a hood. Um, is what I think this eventually will become. I do not have a raincoat and I really could use one. The other fabric that I got, let's talk project real quick. I have a beautiful piece of blue velvet that I bought four yards of, 60 inch wide, it's a knit. I bought it for a dress. Then I thought, you know, I don't want to do it in that dress because it needs a zipper and I really don't want to put a zipper in this. It's so stretchy, I, you know, I, so I've been vacillating on what to use this pretty fabric for. And then I thought, well, I really want this little coat. So I may make it into this sort of um, lightweight little jacket thing. And then the more I looked at it, the more I just didn't like the blue color for the jacket. I thought, I'll never wear it. That color blue, it's not gonna match anything that I wanna put it over. It needs to be a, a standalone project. So I walked in to Hobby Lobby thinking, okay, I'm gonna find something to make this little coat. I'll put a picture up here of the pattern that I wanna sew. And I'm going to definitely be sewing it differently because the thing I found was, oh, look at this corduroy, this beautiful, color quarter. Now I do not wear a lot of brown. Brown is not my first choice. I have an issue with brown, but I love this. I went and I thought, you know what? It's got a little red to it. It's gorgeous. It's a nice weight corduroy, but it has Sherpa on the other side. So look at this chocolatey Sherpa. Doesn't that look like, it looks like coffee with cream in it. It's beautiful colored. So it's double sided. It would be actually quite warm. And in this pattern here, I'll put the picture back up. I actually sketched out sort of how I think it would look in this. Now I don't have, this pattern normally is lined. It has all this stuff going on that it's not going to happen because of this fabric. And because it's um, fused together, I don't think I even have to seam finish. I think I can sew it so that the seams show and you see the little Sherpa end. You see a lot of um, leather and the uh, sheepskin jackets done that way where they have the little edges shown. It's sewn with the seams to the outside. I don't know if you can hear my dog. My husband just let her out and something's happening out there. She's having a, a barking fit. Oh, all the neighbor dogs are barking. Something's going on outside. All the doggies are having a little chorus out there. So anyway, I bought this, three yards of it, more than enough. It's nice and wide. It looks like when I was carrying it, it's heavy. When I was carrying it out, my husband, my son was with me and he said, mom, it looks like you're carrying a sleeping bag, which it does. So I've got this. I'm very excited about this. This will be next week's project. Lord willing in the creek don't rise, as my grandma used to say. So we'll see. That's what I'm hoping to do. Now, this next fabric, this is from Joann's. I've mentioned 
when I did the pot holders that I had this big Joanne order and it got delayed and it got delayed. Well, they ended up just canceling the whole order and I'm not sure why because everything was still in stock. So I think it was just an issue at the um, shipping facility or something. I don't know, but it all got canceled. And I was glad because everything that was in that order was really for the pot holder video and I didn't need it anymore. So I reordered, but I re reordered totally different things and I got now this, I also drew a little sketch of, I'll put it up here, in that same coat pattern, because I was considering doing this with um, a contrast collar maybe. I also thought about doing the velvet with like, a little fur collar. I'll put another picture up. So I, I did a couple little ideas of it, but this is double-sided, not super heavy knit. It feels lovely. So one side, it's, it looks lighter than the other. This sort of white background on this side and blue background on this side. I made this great um, sweatery coat thing I wear all the time. It is the coat that I wear the majority of the time. Put a picture up, I'm, I'll have it linked below if you wanna sew this pattern. I love this thing, I wear it constantly and I want to make this again. So I have a backup, a this one's just a tiny bit lighter weight, that other one's quite heavy, a little bit lighter weight and this color I would wear with everything and look good with my jeans. I can see wearing this a lot. So I bought this at Joann's. I don't have the price in front of me, so I'll put the price down here of what I got it for. I'm pretty sure this was on sale. Really love it. Feels great. So I got that one, and then I have one other fabric from Joann's, and it is a sweater knit. Now I have like five patterns I can make this out of. I'm going to put the picture of what I had kind of thinking in my head here. Um, but look at this. It's a Deep gray, lovely cable knit. It's a true sweater knit. Um, not real heavy, but a nice weight. Something I could see wearing a lot. It would be cute. Dress length, like this is a lovely fabric. They had this in a couple of colors, but this charcoal really spoke to me. And it's a good, if I wanna throw other things over, like a cute scarf or something. So I got this one, and I don't have in front of me how much I bought, but I think I got three yards of this and three yards of this. I'm not sure, I'll put all that on the bottom of the screen so you'll know what I got of these. And the only other thing I got from Joann's was a big spool of maybe thread, because I go through a lot, and it was also on sale. So those are my fun sale fabrics. Now I'm hoping to sew, I have, as you know, I bought, um, at the end of the year, last year, I bought some crinkly, gauzy fabrics that I never sewed up that I'm still going to sew, but I'm waiting till springtime because there are things that I'll wear around the swimming pool and it's just not the time. It's, for me, I'm not gonna be wearing them right now and I try to sew closer to when I wear it because my weight fluctuates a lot and I want to be able to have things um, that fit for that time, <laughs> you know, when I move in. Like this cute shirt. I made this a long time ago and when I made it, and it's still pretty big, um, I made it according to the measurements and I didn't really dry fit it and I wish I would have because you can see where the shoulders my shoulders here, so the shoulders off an inch. I have brought it in some. I think I'm gonna bring it in again in the shoulder. And then I added elastic in the back. So I kind of did a little elastic channel to bring it in just to give it a little more shaping. But if you want to make this adorable pattern, I will link it down below. I have a full tutorial on it, including how to do this interesting neckline, which seems to be the thing, the neckline and the sleeve, um, this really neat treatment. I love these plackets. They can kind of trick you up, especially when you're following a pattern um, direction. Sometimes it's a little confusing. So this is one of my tutorials linked below if you want to sew today's outfit. All right, I went to um, simplicity.com. You may have shopped at Something Delightful. That used to be the name of the pattern company. I noticed quite a while back that Butterick, McCall, Simplicity, Vogue, all of those seem to be um, now one corporation along with new look, new mode, all, I mean, you pretty much if it's a pattern company, a, a commercial pattern company, it's likely to be at simplicity.com now. So I didn't buy, I don't think I bought a single simplicity pattern actually, now that I'm looking at this, I think they're all McCall's Vogue, etc. but it was bought through simplicity.com. I will tell you if you've bought from them in the past and you haven't recently, you'll have to go in and set up a new password and do a few things. Your, most of your information will migrate over, but they want to confirm it's you and do some things. So I had to do that. So I got this. I'm going to put up here a big picture of this so you can see it better. This is Butterick 6705. It is a lovely dress. It has a zipper in the back, a little keyhole in the neckline with a little bit of a casing or a collar. I just It's sort of 40s looking. 
um, kind of end of 30s, beginning of 40s because of the length, etc. It's just a very elegant dress. And I know this is a style that's good for my shape. I am a uh, hourglass shape, slightly fuller on the bottom, and I'm full figured. And this was always just flattering. So I'm very excited. This is going to be beautiful. A lovely crepe would be so good out of this. So I'm very excited about this dress. And it's one I could wear all year. Easy to change the sleeve length if you want to make it for short sleeved or I could do a cap sleeve. This is one that would be easy to alter. So, Butterick 6705. Um, I got all of these on sale. I think they were all, it was the sale where they're normally, um, like this one is a $20 pattern and it, I got it for $4.99. So that's, that's when I buy my patterns. I very seldom will buy a full price pattern. Um, Butterick. 6729. Another great dress. This one it has, it's hard to see from the picture, but it actually has waistline seaming. Um, it's got an asymmetrical option. It has a flouncy sleeve or no sleeve. I could easily do this, leave the flounce off and just have a short sleeve. You, again, I love to change up a sleeve a little bit to create a new, uh, a new look. It has bust line darts in the front and in the back it has waistline darts. So another great one. This one could just be done in a cotton, but I could see doing this in another soft drapey fabric too zipper in the back on this one also okay this one i just love this is my everyday wear like t-shirts comfy t-shirts that look cute and i i thought this was fun with a little um, inset on the side this is mccall's 7286 this is for stretch knits they actually show that you could use like a stretch lace in here they have a lot of different little options for this this is a raglan sleeve we all know i love a raglan sleeve um, so this is raglan sleeve top and you could you know they have here they show you with the sleeves in an alternating color you could have each sleeve a different color the thing with this is you've got lots of design um, options you could add a patch pocket to this if you want to or a breast pocket very fast little project that i'm sure i will be sewing a lot i have a lot of knits that i need to use up that i could see mixing and matching some knits and making some really fun projects with this one um i just okay some of these I don't know when I'm going to sew them, but I want to have them in my stash for the someday. Now this one um, also came, I like this one because it came from small to extra large in one pattern. Uh, this is for stretch knits. It's sort of athleisure looking. It's a dress. It's got pockets in these princess sign, uh, seam lines, which I really like, and a hood option with this. I get to see doing this in a short sleeve too. I have a daughter who would wear this, so I might make this for her sometime. It would be cute with a pair of leggings. I just anyway I think it'd be comfy easy easy to throw on easy to wear but still look a little more cute and because it has some a princess seaming it has a little more fitting through the waistline which is always preferential for my figure type all right this is a learn to sew pattern which surprises me because it has an inset zipper in a knit which can be a little tricky so it's one I want to sew for you guys because I think there's a lot of good learning things in it meant for knits it's uh, McCall's 8138. This is, um, it's very fitted, but it has no seam lines along the waistline. So it just, the pattern just tucks in and tucks back out. Made for knits. It has um, a stand-up collar, kind of like a mock turtleneck. And you can either have the zipper in the front or the back. Um, <clears throat> it's cute. I would definitely do with the zipper in the front personally, because then you can open it and it would be, um, it changes the whole look of the outfit. It kind of goes from a turtleneck collar to looking like a little layover collar. So very cute. Um, this is one I thought this might be the one I make the knit, uh, the velvet out of in the end. This could be a good one for that velvet. We'll see with a really pretty blingy, um, zipper. Um, this one is McCall's 8261. I buy just about every pajama and lingerie pattern out there. And I have a huge, um, I have a huge stash of those kinds of patterns. I bought this because I had seen something that looks like this little step in, um, I want to call it a singlet, a little Stefflin singlet up here. I saw a 1920s pattern that looked a lot like this and I thought this would be pretty easy um, to get that look from a modern pattern. So this is one of those fun little ones. And I like the sleeve, it's just a little bit fuller on the robe and it has the option to do an elastic in it. Um, so anyway, very fast and easy. I think this will be a really quick one to sew. This is meant for wove. It looks like it's made out of knit now that I'm looking at it, but I think it's made, meant for woven. Yeah, charmeuse crepes, um, but can be done in jersey knit. So it actually says on here, do either one. It could be a soft 
woven or a soft knit and would work great. All right, this is McCall's 8390. This is a plus size pattern. It starts at a 20W. So for me, that means it'll fit my hip, but it'll be too big in the waist. I'll have to size it down. But I love that they have patterns that have a more size range. This is sort of a classic little denim skirt. The reason I got it though is it's this view down here, view C, it has like the a yoke with a full skirt on the bottom and I have been seeing so many cute, they're very reminiscent of the 70s where they're denim on top and they have um, multiple patchwork uh, pieces on the bottom and I'd really love to do something like that. So it's a someday thing but I wanted to have it in, in my stash. I could draft all of these patterns but I don't necessarily want to when there's already something out there um, that I could start from. It cuts down on your pattern work time by a lot, especially when if you have to, and a lot of us who so do, you have to do pattern alterations just to get it to fit before you ever cut it out. So um, I am going to eventually make myself a, another set of custom slopers so that when I draft a pattern, it's automatically the fits all in there because the sloper starts out as size Stacy instead of a, um, a standardized size, but not doing that right now because again, my weight is fluctuating so much. So, and it's the holidays, let's face it. It's gonna to be totally different in two months time. This next one I got in all the size ranges, so I have two patterns of it. It's McCall's 8408. Look at this. These pants are the cutest thing ever. I probably would make these for myself at some point, but I'm gonna make a set of this pretty soon for one of my kiddos. I thought they were, I love it. I just love everything about it. I'm gonna look for some really fun um, denim or some a twill. I could see blending where you have like a Glen plaid with a denim. Like the possibilities in my head are just going off. Like I, my, all my synapses are firing. I could see putting um, some trim in between the layers, you know, like a little piping. I love everything about this. And the re what got me excited is <clears throat> I was, I, I spent a lot of time looking at um, fashion shows when the seasons change, so I'll, um, you know, I'll watch the Chanel show and the Dior show and the Givenchy show, and I do all of that on YouTube. They're all available, and I sit and watch them, and I kind of see what the trends are and the colors that are showing up and things that I think are appealing that you might want to pull out of there. And some of that stuff will be trickled down into this sort of these these things too. And you, every once in a while, even like Vogue may have something very similar show up in their patterns. But I saw some funky pants like this after. Um, pop up on my Pinterest page after watching all those fashion shows and they were similar to this, but they were swoopy, red, white, and blue. They were so cute. And I thought, I have a tall, thin kid who would look phenomenal in those pants. So I'm gonna make her a pair. This one's for me and I love it. It's a Vogue. I love Vogue. I love, they're not always easy to alter um, because they are usually a little more advanced in the way that they're constructed, but man, the style is so good. This one has a zipper in the back. It's a V-neck front with a waistline, a full skirt. It has prince, sort of um, interesting princess seeming in the front, and it's just all the things that would be flattering for my figure type. If you're smaller waisted, this is a great one. I'm, I'm full figured, but I'm uh, hourglass. And it's great for a fuller hip line. So very nice. And it, Vogue is one that will put on the back, I don't know if you've, if you've noticed this or if you're new to sewing, they actually have a little key and they have it in their pattern catalog too. And it has a triangle, uh, a triangle pointing down, a triangle pointing up, a square or like a rectangle, and then an, a little hourglass. And those are your figure types. So if you're broader shouldered and narrow hipped, if you're broader hipped and narrow shouldered, if you're hourglass, if it shows your shape, it's more flattering for your type. And this is good for everybody unless you're just the where you're fuller in the waist. Um, this, this draws attention to the waistline. So if you have a wide waistline and you put this band around it, you're gonna look wider. It's just the facts. But, so they, I think that's great. That's one of the things Vogue does. Um, here it is down on, this one says, good for all of the shapes. And the reason is, as I put this up here, this is Vogue, I hope I said that. This one was Vogue 1672. I don't remember if I said it. This one is Vogue 1952. And this one is good for all figure types. And the reason being, if you look at how the waistline, instead of having a band that goes around it, it has 
gathers that draw to the side with a drape. That is so good for, um, it does so many great things. So this is one of those camouflaging styles. Because it does this uh, pulls to the side with a drape, it hides some of the tummy and accentu accentuates to the side so it doesn't really over accentuate the bust line or the hip or the waist. It sort of creates this nice um, straight line. It's slimming. My sister, um, she was teasing me the other day. She says, oh, that's slimmering because I was wearing a shimmery top that was slimming. <laughs> I, I'm going to use that word all the time. I told her I have my new favorite word, slimmering. So here we are with a very slimmering style. Um, and it has multiple sleeve options. It has a collar or no collar. So you could you could make this multiple times and it would look, um, look could look different and very flattering. And it's meant for um, moderate stretch knits or like a silk jersey, stuff like that. So you want a moderate stretch knit for this one. will hang beautifully. This is a very easy um, Vogue, and it has an interesting neck opening here to the side. It's, you can see, I think it's just a button. It doesn't even have a zipper in there. So it's just doing this weird placket to the side, and you can see it, but it's really quite cute. It's, uh, it's a hoodie or not a hoodie. Um, great for like a sweatshirt fabric, uh, another sort of athleisure one. This is one that I could see just throwing on and wearing all the time. I'm not likely to do a vest. I seldom do vests. If I do something like this, I'll just wear it as the top. Um, but I and I don't wear a lot of hoods. I'm not a big hoodie person. I have one hoodie and it's my own um, sewist t-shirt. It's my only hoodie. I just don't wear a lot of hoods. Um, it's probably the hair. <laughs> it's too much hair with hood for me. Uh, but anyway, I could see doing this view I think it'd be really and I could also see doing it short sleeved and be and wearing that. So this one's coming up. I do love a vintage pattern. This is Vogue 9294. It screams 1940s. It says original design 1939 was when this was made. This is just a sweet little house dress. I think it's adorable. It shows it in just a little calico print. It has the option for this um, patch pocket that's sort of um, it's got gathers around the opening, which is if you are slim through the hip, if you're sort of a fuller on top and smaller through the hip, do this pocket. It will add a little to that hip line and give you more of an hourglass shape. Um, I will definitely not. I will be putting a side pocket in it. Um, this one they show with a very sheer fabric over another, which looks so sweet and pretty. I just thought this was elegant. Very classic style. Again, another good flattering shape for me. It's got a little bit of a full sleeve. It's got a little gather to it, which I often don't do because it's a little young looking, I think, but I probably would in this just because it's so classic to the time period. Really like it. And I think it'd be pretty easy. I'm pretty sure this has a side zipper in it. So I love a good side zipper, especially when you do invisible zippers. So easy. Okay, and this last one is very easy, very Vogue. Um, it's got a boat neck, which I do love, and I got it in, it's got all the sizes. The thing I don't like about it, and it uh, probably will change, we'll see. I want to keep, I like the sleeve, I like the neckline, but it has the drop shoulder, and a drop shoulder is not flattering on my figure. It is on a lot of people, but just not for me. I'm broad shouldered, you put the drop shoulder on top of that, and it makes me look dumpier. It just looks, it makes me look slope shouldered, it's just not as attractive for me. If you have a narrow shoulder, a drop shoulder is a good thing for you. It, in, it increases your shoulder line and will help create um, a more balanced figure. Not the best for me. So if I sew this, I'm likely to bring that shoulder line up. I'll warn you now, if you see me sew this, I probably won't sew it this way unless I'm making it for someone else, which I might do because this one came from extra small to extra large in one pattern which I love. So I could sew this for my kid, for my mom, for myself, for my sister, and I like all the fun necklines in it, and I like the funky sleeve. There's actually darts in the sleeve to give it that fun angular shape. The thing about that though, you will not get to see this interesting shape if you don't do it in a little bit of a, um, a fabric with better hand. So if it's too drapey, the sleeve will just crumple in on itself, and you won't see this interesting shape. You want to have uh, some good body in that fabric to see the shape of this sleeve. So you have to consider that when you're doing it. And I'm pretty sure this is meant for knit, cross grain, fleece, pontane, yep, a knit, meant for knit. Okay, I have a few PDF patterns. I got two of them from simplicity.com. I'm gonna put my phone in front of me so I can 
um, look at the picture and tell you about it. I'm going to set, I'm going to do the same thing where I put the picture up here. The first one is McCall 7634, and oh my goodness. This is so cute. Again, sort of athleisure looking. Look at the wide leg knit pant. Look, I love all the fun striping, the interesting neckline. You can do it in a crop top, in a dress, in a short, in a pant, all the things. I think this is so cute. I may make this for myself. I may make this for one of my kids. I just love everything about it. So I got this one in PDF and then I got this, another PJ one. Very basic, I probably have 10 others very similar to it. This is meant for knits. I again, got it because it has sort of the singlet step in, little um, teddy style. I really like that in view A. Um, and I like all the little lace attachments. I love a knit sleepwear because it's just comfy and easy to wear. So I probably would make view A because I just think it's super cute. I probably will lengthen the short on it. It's a very short short and I'm a very full on the bottom girl and I just like a little bit more coverage for myself even if it's just to sleep in. So those are the two PDF I got from uh, Simplicity and then I also bought this one off of Etsy. It's called Long Sleeve PDF. It's a V-neck sort of shell top. Um, it is long sleeved and I'm going to be making it in short sleeve. This is one I'm going to be making for my sister very soon. It's a PDF pattern and I will tell you something that I'm working on. Back there, um, this room before I, um, when it was two separate rooms, this I'm sitting in the bedroom side, back there behind me was the um, sort of media room or like the, I don't know what you would call it, but they had a big projector that projected against that wall with the eaves, the people who owned it before us. And there is a, a, an electrical plug in the ceiling. It's wonderful that that is there because I'm going to put another projector up. I bought a very small lightweight projector that I can project down onto my cutting table so I can project my PDF patterns instead of printing them out. I know that a lot of people do this. There's a little more to it. It's a little fussier on the front end, but it saves so much paper and time and fuss once you get it set up. So my husband and I are going to be working very soon on hanging a um, a projector up there and I'm going to be working on getting it figured out, getting my um, cords. It's not a very fancy projector. I, I did not invest a lot of money in it at all. So we'll see how well it works for what we're doing. I wanted to kind of test it out before I made a big investment. I'm going to have to save my pennies before I make a big investment in a short throw projector or something like that but I think it will work great. I'm very excited about it. And so I'm going to be, once we get that set up, I'm sure I'll do a video on us getting it all set up. We've got to buy some long cords and so forth to get everything all plugged in, get my computer plugged into it. Cause it's not, um, it's not going to be convenient for me to climb up a ladder to plug in a thumb drive into it and climb back down. I'd rather have a cord. <laughs> I think we'd have a cord snaking down so I can just plug it in that way um, rather than climbing up and down a ladder. But that's coming and I'm going to make, I think the first thing I'm going to do is this PDF pattern for my sister. Um, so make her a couple shells. And I love, I love a PDF because they almost always have all the sizes in there. So you make one investment and then you can either project it, if I'm like this, you can project it right on your fabric, trace it on the fabric, no pattern needed at all as far as printing out. Or if you do uh, if you're like me, I love to have a paper pattern, but I like to have my tissue paper pattern instead of printing it out on, on paper, on printer paper, and then tracing it again or taping it all together. I do not love that method. So I will be tracing my, most of these I will trace off. I know if I make this for my sister, she'll probably need 10 of them over time. She wears a lot of little shells with something over it, um, either a jacket or a, a cute top, and that's sort of how she dresses. And so if we find a pattern that fits, that works great for her, I'm sure I'll make it many times. So I want to go ahead and just trace it off, have a pattern that's fitted to her. If you have, if you're not a custom, or if you're not a standard size and you do pattern alteration anyway, that's another nice thing about having the projector is you can project it down and manipulate and a lot of things you can do. Um, so I'm very excited to try this. This is a new thing. I know lots of you out there use this. I have had many comments on it in the um, down below and I appreciate that. It's really helped me think a new way about my sewing and about my preparation. So 
coming soon. We're going to hang something off the ceiling up there. Then I'm hopeful though, because of how we're setting up, it won't be dangling down in the room and be um, obstructive. I don't want, I like my room to be clean and clear and not have a lot of things out in it. It's a little messy right now, but that's one of the things I'm concerned about um, getting that set up. Another update is, um, I, if you saw a while back, I did a little room tidy and I put together a pattern cabinet and it is still only half full. The cabinet came um, set up for um, file folders, one side for standard and one side for legal. And I don't want it, I don't want legal. <laughs> I want standard and standard, but I, there's not rods. They didn't include rods and I have not been able to buy rods. That fit it so I bought some rods that don't fit it and I'm getting ready to get somebody to cut them down for me so I can finally finish doing my pattern organization so my patterns are still not all in there because of that um, so that's going to be a whole day of me organizing and figuring that out I also started at my own personal pattern catalog so I don't accidentally rebuy a pattern um, and I have not finished working on that so that's something I'm working on is getting my own pattern catalog updated and um, put together so I'm more organized. I'd like to be able to just reference the catalog real quick for my um, for my yardages and things instead of having to dig through and find the pattern. Um, that's just because I plan. I plan sometimes months out my projects. I always have. Even when I didn't sew on YouTube, I, I planned like that. So I'm still working on some of those things. I would love to know what your plans are for the new year and the projects that you're going to be working on. Are you starting a new thing? Are you trying something new? I have not revisited in a long time um, Battenberg lace making or my smocking or some of those things that I enjoy doing but haven't done in a long time. And I may try and circle back and do some of those things. Those are things I used to do a lot when I had small children um, and I haven't done it since and my kids are all adults so it would be kind of fun to I have done some beautiful smocked nightgowns for myself and I would kind of like to, to do some of that again so we'll see I'm, I'm always taking suggestions I got a few really great ones on my end of the year video and I've written them down a pair of men's pants with the fly front zipper or at least a pair of pants with a fly front zipper will be in it that's applicable whether you're a man or a woman the zippers done the same way so um, I definitely will be working on that pretty soon. I have, um, my husband has made a few requests. He'd like some sort of tropical shirts. So I'm gonna be making some more men's shirts soon. Um, come springtime for my husband. He loves the shirts that look like they button up but they're Velcro, sort of like the surfer shirts. Um, that's his favorite thing, especially for like around the pool. So I'm definitely going to be um, scouting out some really fun fabrics for him. He will be involved in that decision <laughs> so that he will wear it and a new fab a new pattern for that to work with for you. So leave me comments below. What are you working on? Is there a video that you would like to see? Is there something you're struggling with that you would like to see um, in front of you to make it a little easier for you to work through it? I'm very curious. I love to know what other creative people are working on. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I would love it if you would like, share, and subscribe. My channel has grown. I'm super grateful. I'm over 3,500 subscribers. What a blessing. And it's so fun because the sewing community here is just the best. You guys are so creative, interesting, and fun. There are some really knowledgeable sewists hanging out in this channel, and they leave comments below. So check out the comments. You might find something you're interested in. They may have left a comment on it on some of these videos. I really love this community and it's fun to continue to grow this creative sewing circle. I'll see you next week and I think we'll be sewing up that corduroy jacket. See you next week for another fun video.